We want to first of all talk about this virus here. Sure. Uh, first of all, tell us just a little bit about what you know from being in the public in the public mm -hmm. health meetings and with the EOC meetings and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Tell us a little bit about this virus, how it differs from the normal cold and flu, and and why we have to take these extra precautions. Okay. So COVID-19 actually started in Wuhan, China, as most people know, and they've traced it back to a seafood and meat market there. Um, it is similar in some ways to cold and flu, and actually um, the family of viruses, coronaviruses, is what causes a common cold, but the COVID-19 is a different strain of it, kind of like when we had the flu, we had swine flu a few years back. Some people may be familiar with that. So it's just a different strain of that virus that's new and novel. And that's why it's so different, obviously, than the flu. With the flu, we have medications and things, right? We have vaccines that can prevent the flu. We also have antiviral medications and things like that that we can treat people with. But there is no pharmaceutical interventions that are available for COVID-19. So in, we have to use these other interventions and other measures, you know, like asking people to wash their hands and be more mindful of that, um, making sure they do it for 20 seconds and doing some of the mitigation strategies that we're now seeing come out. So those are the options that we have in dealing with this virus to keep our medical system from being overtaxed with additional people who may become sick from it. Yeah. Right. I think we've actually got a slide on that, we, don't we? We do, Gordon? we do. And a lot of people have sure. been asking, there's a hashtag going around, flatten the curve. And yes. people, are, people are asking questions, what does that mean? What is that? But it actually right. is there to help you, right? It's actually in place to make sure that we're not, like you said, making sure those hospitals aren't getting an influx of people at one one time. Right. So it is uh, something that's been used in several other pandemics, um, the CDC's guidance with that. So you want to avoid having a peak like that and you want to be able to take and flatten that curve out because you can see if you get to that peak, you're going to overburden your medical system. So people, you know, who are going to need to go to the ER for just regular everyday stuff is going to take away from all of those things within the within the medical system. So we want to make sure that we keep everything flattened out so that our healthcare system's capacity is not overrun mm -hmm. with a new and novel virus. Okay. And, and this is also why large events are being canceled. You're seeing all, all of these different things that are saying, hey, don't be in areas with more than 50 people and, right. and stuff like that. That's for this flattening the right. curve, right? Right. It, it, yes. It's, it's this the, form of social distancing that, right. that, you're, that we talk about, and that's the magic terms that y'all use mm -hmm. in uh, public health and public medicine. What is that and what do sure, we need to do yeah. to, to help ourselves out? Sure. So uh, some of the pieces of social distancing is, of course, avoiding crowded places. Um, you know, obviously people are going to need groceries and stuff. And I mean, the, the stores have been selling out of things. You don't, you just need stuff for, I think the president said today, you know, you just need a week's worth of stuff. Just do your normal shopping. He said the grocery stores are not going to be closing. So don't, you know, worry about that. They may adjust their hours to be able to do more cleaning and stocking and things like that. But that was something the president said today. But trying to shop at non-peak hours or using delivery services, using pickup services, and some of those great options that we have right now. Now, if you are in one of those at-risk groups or you have a loved one or a friend who's in one of those at-risk groups, you know, persons that are over 60 or have underlying health conditions, and some of those underlying health conditions are very common, like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, maybe you can um, help them out and get some of the things that they may need and bring them to them. Because it's important that those people stay home right now. And it is important that the rest of us stay home as much as possible because we need to stop the spread between us because 80% of people are not gonna have any problems or very mild symptoms, I should say. But it's that 20% that are gonna have the very adverse effects that we need to protect. Who are some of the other people that are in the high risk group? I mean, you mentioned folks that are diabetic. You right. mentioned folks, uh, you know, I've seen various lists, but what are you recommending from the Department of Health? Um, you know, people who are any, any type of immunocompromised persons, people with asthma, COPD, you know, any of those kind of respiratory issues, um, we want to make sure that they all take those extra precautions. Pretty much if you have any other kind of underlying health condition. 